from the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. The government's plan to demolish shanty towns in the country is not driven by ethnic cleansing and will be executed in a humane manner, according to the attorney representing the Crown in a judicial review centered on the demolition of the unregulated communities. Crown attorney Kayla Green Smith's assertions were in response to accusations made by Fred Smith QC in a previous hearing, accusing the government of embarking on a dictatorial policy to completely eliminate ethnically Haitian Bahamian communities in the country. Mr. Smith represents 177 residents and shanty town occupants in the case. During the virtual hearing before Justice Cheryl Grant Thompson yesterday, Mrs. Green Smith said they objected to any reference of the term ethnic cleansing during the proceedings as the matter before the court related to the government's comprehensive initiative aimed at removing illegal, unregulated, and unsafe buildings in shanty towns. She also said it was critical to note the use of the term shanty town was not meant to be pejorative, as the term was accepted in common usage to refer to settlements or communes consisting of impoverished housing built illegally in areas which lacked proper sanitation, safe water supply, electricity, and other basic necessities. She insisted that the government's primary goal, as highlighted in the affidavit of Labor Minister Dion Folks, was to eliminate irregular living conditions associated with improperly constructed houses in order to elevate the living standards of persons residing in such communities. Activist Luby Georges has said available housing in Abaco will be the biggest challenge for residents of the farm shantytown with a government-mandated eviction and demolition looming. Mr. Georges said while he does not endorse people breaking the law, the government should have released a comprehensive plan in response to the island's housing crisis, which he said has remained a glaring issue since Hurricane Dorian ravaged Abaco in 2019. At Parliament on Monday, Public Works Minister Desmond Bannister said the sting operation, which took place last week Thursday morning, took place place because of continued challenges with the area. COVID-19 vaccinations on New Providence will come to a halt on Friday evening to allow officials time to reassess the rollout. Since the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine began being administered just a few weeks ago, the committee overseeing the rollout has been carefully monitoring the uptake on those stepping forward to receive the injection. Initially, the government had just 20,000 doses of the vaccine available, a gift of the Indian government, which was later supplemented by another 32,500 doses through COVAX, the global vaccine program. Here in the Bahamas, priority workers such as those working in the healthcare sector were the first to be offered the vaccine, and over the subsequent weeks, this has been broadened to include many other sectors, including just days ago anyone over 50. Police fished a partially decomposed body from waters off the former Pioneer's shipping dock located on Bay Street yesterday. Police say shortly before 9 a.m. yesterday, officers were called to the area. While there, the officers fished the body of a male from the water. Although a suspected drowning, police will await an autopsy report to determine the exact cause of death. Police are also waiting for the identification of next of kin to determine the victim's identity. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, a prosecutor said today that he will charge a former white suburban Minneapolis police officer with second-degree manslaughter for killing 20-year-old black motorist Dante Wright in a shooting that ignited days of unrest and clashes between protesters and police. The charge against former Brooklyn Center police officer Kim Potter will be filed today, three days after Wright was killed during a traffic stop and as the nearby murder trial progresses for the ex-officer charged with killing George Floyd last May. The former Brooklyn Center police chief has said that Potter, a 26-year veteran and training officer, intended to use her taser on Wright but fired her handgun instead. South Africa's decision to suspend the use of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine due to preliminary reports of rare blood clots has left the country without any shots as it struggles to combat an aggressive coronavirus variant. South Africa has more than 1.5 million confirmed cases of COVID-19, including at least 53,000 deaths, representing more than 30 percent of all the confirmed cases in Africa's 54 countries. So far, it has only inoculated 290,000 healthcare workers, all with the J&J vaccine. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A ridge of high pressure will remain the chief weather feature producing stable conditions across the islands through tonight. Beachgoers should continue to exercise caution as the risk of rip currents exists along east coast beaches. In the northwest and central Bahamas, it'll be mostly sunny and warm with a slight chance of a shower becoming fair and warm tonight. Small crafts should be alert for gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers and thunderstorms. Winds northeast to east at 
15 knots, seas 3 to 5 feet over the ocean. In the southeast Bahamas, it'll be partly cloudy to cloudy and warm with isolated showers. Small craft should be alert for gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers and thunderstorms. Winds north to northeast at 15 knots, seas 3 to 5 feet. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 84 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 68. The sun will set at 730 and will rise tomorrow morning at 647. That's news break. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper now on the streets or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.